This is Nyancat, a 12-frame GIF of what can best be described as an 8-bit rendering of a cat with a toaster strudel for a body that is being shot through space on a rainbow emanating from its butt. It was posted to the internet in April of 2011 and quickly became a viral sensation. On February 10th, 2021, the artist who created Nyancat posted a remastered version of the GIF to the online crypto art gallery Foundation and offered it up for auction. It eventually sold for 300 Ethereum, a cryptocurrency with the equivalent value of 589,899 US dollars. Yes, that GIF is worth half a million dollars. Okay, so first off, a big disclaimer. If you're already an expert in Bitcoin, if you understand cryptocurrency, if you're already in the crypto art marketplace and you understand all this stuff, this is not the video for you. Get out of here! Can't you see we don't want you anymore? I'm not gonna reveal anything new or suggest anything or advise you on what to do or how to get into the crypto market or how to make a billion dollars in crypto. I don't know any of that stuff. I'm, uh, I'm a total neophyte in all this. I really just want to sort of give my, my personal reaction to this because it's so crazy. So yeah, that's my disclaimer for this. Okay, so first of all, if you don't know what crypto art is, I'm welcome to the weird side of things here. Well, before we start, of course, we have to figure out what any of this means. We have to understand a few other concepts, starting with... What is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency secured by cryptography. They are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology, a distributed ledger enforced by a disparate network of computers. They're generally not issued by any central authority like a bank, rendering them theoretically immune to government interference or manipulation. Examples of cryptocurrency include Bitcoin, Ethereum, Peercoin, and my personal favorite, Dogecoin. This brings us to the next thing you have to understand, which is blockchain. Blockchain is a specific type of database. It differs from typical databases in the way that it stores information. Blockchains store data in blocks that are chained together. Different types of information can be stored on a blockchain, but the most common use so far has been as a ledger for transactions. Decentralized blockchains are immutable, which means that the data entered is irreversible. For Bitcoin, this means that transactions are permanently recorded and viewable to anyone. So now we're ready to understand NFTs, which stands for Non-Fungible Tokens. It's a form of cryptocurrency with individual characteristics that set them apart, so they're unique, they're rare, and they're indivisible. So unlike a $10 bill, which is fungible, an NFT is unique unto itself, the same way that a collectible card is unique, and you would expect that same card back if you gave it to someone. Examples of NFTs include digital art, video game assets, and crypto collectibles. NFTs may address the problem of monetizing digital art. All of that understood, we can finally go back to crypto art. Here's what they wrote in Crypto Art, A Decentralized View. When a digital asset made by an artist is added to a digital gallery, a token is generated by a smart contract and deposited in the artist's wallet. The token is permanently linked to the artwork and is unique, one-of-a-kind asset that represents ownership and authenticity of the underlying artwork. Once created, the artwork starts its life on the given blockchain, where a fan or collector can purchase it, and where it can be subsequently exchanged, traded, or held by collectors like any other rare artifact. I was introduced to this whole concept recently by my good friend Drasco V, and uh, so he tipped me off onto the, all this madness, and I've been kind of going on a rabbit hole uh, since then. Drasco, uh, at Drasco underscore V, has been uh, doing some drops on uh, the NFT sites with a uh, collaborative partner who goes by the name of Fake Up, uh, and they did a series of Game Boy collectibles, and uh, they've done quite well with it. I think one of their one of their Game Boy collectibles actually went for 6K US uh, in Ethereum, of course. Um, so that's awesome. One thing about all this is I have absolutely no problem with artists making money, even a lot of money. Um, what I want to talk about is more like just the sort of extremes to which this is, seems to be going and some of the weird questions it seems to raise, at least for me. All right, so let's, let's look at a few more examples before we go on. So to show you how legit this has gone, back in September 2020, Christie's, the famous auction house, was set to sell its first non-fungible token in an upcoming auction of what has been characterized as, quote-unquote, the largest artwork in the history of Bitcoin. 
Art historian turned blockchain artist Benjamin Gentili, as part of the Robert Alice Art Collective, had created a work called Portrait of a Mind, a monumental series of 40 paintings stretching over 40 meters in length. Another example, Right Place and Right Time, which is a digital piece of art on Bitcoin's fluctuating price action. The art actually changes as the price of Bitcoin goes up and down. This piece of art has ended up selling for more than 100,000 US dollars. Crypto artist Pack has launched an auction for their collection of non-fungible tokens titled The Creation. The artwork is based on Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam, cut into 560 individual NFT tiles. Collectors will bid on each tile and thus successively reveal different parts of the whole picture. Pack is currently the second highest grossing crypto artist in the world, and his NFTs have sold for roughly 5.2 million combined. Art creates, collectors create, creators create art. That is, for lack of a better word, in his tweet, his artist statement, or at least that's how I would read it. Now, I went to post-secondary for fine art, not because I wanted to become an artist, I actually wanted to become an illustrator. I was sort of more on the pragmatic side. It was my fallback if, in case music didn't turn out. Like, that's a smart idea. The whole uh, idea of what art means to people in the modern world and how it's bought and sold and how it's thought of by collectors. And even before the whole like craziness of NFTs and cryptocurrency and crypto art, the art market, it's always been crazy. It's always been kind of, well, in some cases, kind of what I would call weirdly irrational. But you know, I mean, it's, it, for me, what it comes down to is it's, it always comes down to ideas. It comes down to storytelling. It comes down to, you know, what people believe this thing is worth, not because there isn't any inherent intrinsic worth to something necessarily, but more of the story that you're telling about it. What does the art mean? What, under what conditions was it created? Who is the artist and what is their story? You know, there's lots of fantastic stories about artists who had very interesting lives and how they worked or what they did, like Jackson Pollock or, or Basquiat or any of those uh, artists. You know, there's a kind of, um, you know, mystique to that whole thing that I think uh, it contributed to what their art was worth. But yeah, it's 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 this idea that context becomes everything, that there is no inherent value. Like if you think of, about the marketplace, like when things are bought and sold or like what things are worth in general, uh, it's always about some kind of idea about demand. People want a certain thing and somebody else is able to provide that thing and then there's a certain agreed upon cost uh, and an exchange of value. So then that accounts for everything from plumbing services to get the flood out of your basement to an iPod, which solves the problem of you wanting thousands of songs in your pocket so that you can listen to all your music while you're on the subway going to work. So the question really becomes like, how does art fit into that? I think that, you know, in a lot of ways, art has been a kind of commodity that was traded almost like stocks. And there were all sorts of reasons why a certain art stock might go up or down, whether the artist had heat or were going out of fashion, whether there was some sort of new thing that was going on with them, maybe a newsworthy item, or God knows what. I mean, there's so many different things. Uh, some of the most successful artists were also really great at marketing themselves uh, and making themselves seem larger than life and really attractive, um, where, you know, if that wasn't the case necessarily, maybe that art would have just sat dusty in some warehouse somewhere and never been appreciated by anyone. Buying in early had cachet. You know, if you were associated with a certain artist or a certain movement and you were smart enough to sort of catch onto that heat and get in early, uh, and then you saw that stock rise, you saw how much that art appreciated over time, that sort of had its own inherent value to you as a collector. Right now though, this is a bubble of wild speculation and, and it's just absolutely in overdrive. It's, uh, it's on steroids. Uh, there is something happening within the crypto art market that is just exceeds everything I've ever seen before in the more traditional art market. So here's what I don't get. This is the part that really confuses me. Okay, so you have digital art. One of the main problems with digital art, and as we were talking about earlier with the NFTs, that may be something that the NFTs solve, is that digital art can be infinitely reproduced. Um, it's the same thing with music, right? So when you see a piece of digital art, like let's say for instance, the Nyan Cat GIF, um, you see that GIF and it is the thing itself. It's not a reproduction uh, in the same sense that, uh, you know, a reproduction of the Sistine Chapel is a reproduction. That 
Reproduction of the Sistine Chapel is not the Sistine Chapel. In order to see it, you have to go to the Vatican and you have to look at the Sistine Chapel and you have to look up and see the actual work and that is the actual work itself. It cannot be taken out from the Sistine Chapel and put somewhere else easily. Uh, with digital art, if you see the Nyanket GIF, you are seeing the actual work. This is the work as it was made. It is a GIF, it lives on the internet, it is a 12 frame animation. What you see is the thing itself. So when it gets sold, it's not like it goes away for the rest of us. We still get to see the thing itself. It is the Sistine Chapel of the Nyan Cat universe. And then the other part that really weirds me out about this is I think about like what the rationale for something costing a certain amount is, right? You think about the works of art uh, throughout history that have really commanded a massive price, like the one, two, three, maybe even six million dollar paintings. Something like a Picasso. Okay, well there's a very different thing. First of all, when you get the Picasso, it is a singular work. You actually own the physical thing that Picasso touched and put his paints to, and the concept that he was trying to relay is now in fixed position in this actual canvas. Yes, people can see reproduction, but it is still just a reproduction. Moreover, someone could put that away and you could never see it, so it could be, it could be made more valuable or it could be made to be hidden away. That's not something you can do with a Nyan Cat gift, let's say, for instance. It's already been pre-produced too many times on the internet, you can see it everywhere. Then there's the idea of the artist himself. Picasso is now just sort of, it's widely accepted across the world that he was a genius, that he changed the course of art and, and probably history, and the way that we look at the world was changed because of Picasso. That in itself has a kind of, I don't mean, it's weird to talk about all this stuff with inherent because nothing really has inherent value, right? Like, it's all just a covenant. We just agree to say, yes, this has value or that does not have value, you know? I mean, there was a point in time where peppercorns, like the pepper that you put on your food today without even thinking about it was worth more than gold because that was the conditions of the marketplace at that time. And you had little bags of peppercorn and you paid for crap with peppercorns. That certainly isn't the case today. Peppercorns, who cares? Going back to the idea of Picasso, like the idea that this person is, and his work, that singular piece is part of history, that it has some sort of meaning to us as a culture, as a global culture, that to me somehow rationalizes how that could be so much money. Also for me, it just feels so cynical when, 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 when Pack talks about this idea that the, the buyers of the art are the ones that are making the art, when you look at the creation of Adam or what will be called creation in the end, that crypto art is being made by people who are simply buying into a concept, a story that they were told that they get excited about, that they believe in. It's, it's to me, it's like, it's not about the art itself. It, it's this sort of weak concept that doesn't further humanity. It doesn't change anything for me. It doesn't reflect back to me the world that I live in and somehow tell me something new or make me think something different about my condition as a human being or how I relate to anyone else or our culture or our community or anything like that. It's just, I don't know, I guess cynical is the word I come back to and it's just where we're looking at a big change and I think there's something that's coming that is interesting that's going to come because of this stuff, right? I don't think it's all just it's, it's, I don't think it's negative necessarily, but it, to me it seems like a very, it seems like a dark moment. The other thing that's very weird about this, like the GameStop situation, like, like Bitcoin and all these other things that are so speculative, is that really it shows you that it is about storytelling. It is about people that can get up and make you convinced about something. Whether it's, you know, the guy who made everyone believe it, that that GameStop stock was gonna, you know, that there was something valuable to be done with that company and you should invest in it as opposed to trying to tank it. Or Elon Musk getting us excited about Mars, which I personally think is the most boring planet going. And every time I see a picture of its surface, I, I kind of die a little bit inside out of sheer boredom. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't hate me. You know, or any of this crypto art stuff where people are just whipping each other into a frenzy. It's a covenant. It's an agreement that these things have value. And they only have value as long as people agree that they do. There's nothing intrinsic or inherent uh, about that value. To me, it makes me think of that classic Warner Brothers cartoon with uh, Wile E. Coyote chasing the Roadrunner, where he ends up in thin air, nothing beneath him, and he just keeps going. And it's only at the moment when he realizes that he's run off the cliff that he actually begins to fall. And I wonder if, you know, we're gonna have that moment with cryptocurrency, crypto art, and the crypto everything. 
All that said, I think there are some interesting, maybe positive sides of this too. And I think certainly in the future, maybe NFTs and cryptocurrency and crypto art could be a really great, wonderful thing for artists where they can really control their works, where they can control their IP, but also share in the wealth that they might be able to create and also invite others in their community who care about their art to participate in that. As opposed to going, let's say, for instance, a traditional label deal uh, where you're giving power over to a company, you might say, if you can get a bunch of investors to give you a certain amount of money to produce a song or to make an album, then they participate and they have an equal and vested interest in your work and you're continuing to be successful. I think there's something really interesting in that. So here's an example of that at work. Rocky has just announced its launch and the first major success story with progressive house artist Guy J raising over $24,000 for his release, Cotton Eyes. Rocky is a music streaming service and digital payment ecosystem designed to solve some of the most fundamental problems of the music industry. According to the article, you might call Rocky part Kickstarter and part investment opportunity. Now fans can support their favorite artists by investing in their work and getting a share of the royalties to boot. All right, so in the end, wh where, where is all this going? What does the future hold? What is the ultimate result? I mean, I don't know. I'm at the absolute edge of my understanding of this. Like, it really took some some thinking to even wrap my brain around what any of this meant, because to me, it just felt so irrational and so, like, out of the norm. Like, there was no, there's no anchor point for it, really, and it's so new. In, in so many ways, to me, it feels like I've never seen anything like that before. I could be completely wrong, but that's that's what my impression is. So, I don't know. I'm definitely no progr pro 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 ugh, prognosticator, prognosticator of the future trying to tell you like an oracle what I think is going to happen. My feeling is, I think the whole thing is a bit of a bubble, like the whole cryptocurrency thing. I mean, what, one Bitcoin is now valued at over 50k US? I mean, that just seems insane. And at some point too, there has to be a correction where other markets and fiat currencies and, and countries even will go, wait, this is going to ma like cause massive disruption. Who knows what kind of political or response might be coming for any of this stuff. I don't know. This is way beyond my expertise. But anyways, I feel like it's a bubble. It might be like the dot-com bubble. I feel like it's going to burst. I feel like those kind of things are going to be in decline. But also, I do feel like there is some very interesting aspect to all of this in the idea of the NFT and the, and the idea of cryptocurrency and the idea of these distributed systems that don't have a centralized power. I think it might have some answers for artists and people like Emojin Heap uh, who have been sort of touting this blockchain-like idea for music. You know, maybe they'll be right, but again, I think ultimately only time will tell. Anyways, I would love to hear from you guys. If you have any thoughts or ideas or impressions of cryptocurrency, crypto art, what does any of this mean? Is it good for people? Is it good for culture? Is it is it going to be the answer or is it just another flash in the pan? I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyways, hope you enjoy this video and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.